In this video, I will show you how you can snap and tile windows on Linux inside the GNOME desktop environment. I will also show you how to snap windows into a custom layout and also how to install all the tools that you need. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. As said, what I will show you in this video applies only for the GNOME desktop environment, which I am running right now, this is actually Ubuntu, and it's actually running from a USB drive, not the live USB drive, but the full installation on a USB drive. So if you are interested how to install and run Linux from a USB drive, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now the default window snapping that you get on GNOME, when you drag the window to the edge of the screen, then you will get this rectangle and this is how the window will be snapped, like that. And now if I get a second window, I can snap this one here. And that's the only snapping you get, except that if you drag it to the top, the window will maximize. So by default there is not much that you can do. But thankfully GNOME has extensions for snapping and I will show you my few favorites. Before we do anything, we need to install some packages first. So open the terminal and write sudo apt install gnome tweaks and gnome shell extensions. We need those two packages first. So let's install them. Perfect, installed. Let's close the terminal and let's open the first extension. The first extension that I will show you is called forge. Let's install that one. Click on the switch and install. Perfect, it's installed. And now if I open extensions, and as you can see, this one automatically ties the windows. Let's open another one. Text editor. This one opened down here. Let's try to create a new tab and drag it out. Now we have this one down here as well. So this is a very interesting one if you like auto tiling, like Pop OS is doing. Let's try to close some windows. And this one, it automatically fills the whole screen. Let's take a quick look at the settings. Here is the Forge extension, settings. Now interestingly this one was not tiled, but maybe this is by design. Now you have a lot of options here. You can define the gap size, or if you don't like the gaps, you can remove them, or only remove if you have a single window. Then on the layout you can define the drag and drop behavior. Default is tapped, but you can also switch to stacked. Then you can define colors, a lot of colors for all kinds of stuff, for hints, for stacked, for focus, for floating. If you love colors, then this is definitely for you. Then you can exclude some workspaces from tiling. While tiling is active, you cannot make the windows float, they will always jump back. So if you want to exclude some workspace from tiling, for instance, workspace 0, enter, and now the windows are again floating. Let's undo that, enter. The window is now back where it was. Then of course you have shortcuts for focus, for move, for snapping, for swapping. Also workspace shortcuts, container shortcuts for splitting, for stacking, focus shortcuts, and then some special ones for preferences and also modifier keys for drag and drop. So a lot of shortcuts. Then we have also experimental here. And although it says they are experimental and buggy, they are enabled by default. Maybe not experimental at all. Production ready. But seriously, this extension is very solid. So let's try a few more things out. Let's create a few more. And now if I want to rearrange those, you can see where the window will be snapped. Let's try here. Then let's take this one, let's place it here. Maybe this one here. Let's close that. And now if you want to disable tiling, just press super and W. And now the windows are again floating. And pressing super W again, the windows jump back into place. You can also group the windows together. Then you will get a header up here. Let's bring this one in as well. Now I have three windows inside this one here. Really awesome stuff, so if you are into auto tiling then this extension is definitely for you. So much about Forge, and let's go to the next one. The next extension is gtile, so let's try this one out. Install, here we can see gtile is active and also you get this little icon up here, which you can also remove if you want. So if I for instance select this window and click on the icon, then I get this little gtile window with the grid and here I can specify where I want to position my window. So let's say I want to position it like that. And then I get something like this. You can also do the same thing by pressing windows and enter. 
the same window appears and you can also do the same thing with the up and down keys or left and right or for instance by pressing shift you can make the area larger or make the area smaller and then just press enter. You have also different grids that you can choose from. You have a 6x4 grid and also a 4x4 grid. And if I use this one now, for instance, like that, the next time you open it, you will get the same 4x4. And of course, if you don't want to resize the window, you can close it by pressing escape. Let's check out GTL settings. First, you have some basic settings like auto close, like animation, if you want to show the icon that I previously mentioned. And you can also define the grid sizes. So let's say I want a uh, three times one and activate gtile then i also have a three by one grid let's see if it works yeah here it is then you have theme where you can choose your theme if you want i will leave it at default and then comes the more interesting stuff you have accelerators which are keyboard shortcuts for different presets here you can define the shortcut and the preset itself you can define under resize presets here is the explanation for the preset format and for the first preset that means you have a 4x4 grid. By activating the preset you cycle through these four areas. So for instance this last area means first column, fourth row, till first column, fourth row. Now you can freely define those presets as you wish and then assign them a shortcut key. In this case the shortcut for preset 1 is alt, super and the keypad number 1. In my opinion, the power of Gtile lies in these shortcuts with the presets. It works perfect if you want to snap windows with the keyboard, so if you're more used to a keyboard-based workflow, then this extension is definitely for you. Now let's try out the presets. In my opinion, the default ones are really intuitive. So let's try Alt Super and Keypad 1. Then the same with Keypad 3, 7, 9, which are basically the corners. Then you have 4 and 6 and also 8 and 2. So really easy and really intuitive. And 5 is center. Then you have a similar thing with control instead of alt and also with shift. So let's try it out with the control super and 1, 4, 7, 9, 6, 3. This preset obviously has 3 rows and 2 columns. Maybe let's try out a different window. I cannot make this one smaller. Let's try the terminal window. And again shift super, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this one has a grid 3 by 3. Really easy to position windows, super intuitive. And again, the super enter brings up the Gtile window. So let's bring this one to the right. And then let's do Firefox to the left. Somehow like that. As said, if you're more used to a keyboard based workflow, then Gtile is definitely for you. Now let's disable Gtile like that. And let's find the next extension. This one is called Tiling Assistant. So let's try that one out. Install Tiling Assistant. Here it is. It's active. This one has more of a Windows feel to it. So if you're coming from Windows, then this one will be familiar to you. So let's try this one out. It has edge snapping, corner snapping. Again, stuff that you would expect with the Tiling Assistant. So let's say I want to snap here. This window is now snapped to the right and you also get this little pop-up where you can select the application that you want to snap to the left side. In my case the only application left is Firefox, so I can snap this one here to the left. Now let's open another window, for instance the terminal. Now I can snap this one on top of other windows, let's say like this. I don't want to snap anything up there. Now this one is on top. Or I can also insert the window into the existing layout by pressing Ctrl and now you can see where the window will be inserted, let's say here. This window was now inserted, let's try another one. Again press Ctrl and let's say I want it down here. Now I have this one at the bottom and the other windows were resized accordingly. Another cool thing is that you can also resize the windows and as you resize them, as you can see, the other windows are resized accordingly. Let's try this one at the bottom. As you can see, the other windows are resized as well. Really useful stuff. Let's move this one here for instance, this one here, and this one let's say here, or maybe the full area, like that. So if you are used to a mouse based workflow, then this extension is definitely for you and it's also my personal favorite. Now let's check out the settings because this one has more to offer. First you have the general settings, for instance if you want to see the pop up after tiling, I actually don't want to see that. If you want to have gaps between windows then you can define those here. 
and then down here you have the keyboard behavior. So this extension also has a few basic keyboard bindings and here you can tweak the behavior. Don't be confused by the disabled option, this doesn't mean that the keyboard shortcuts are disabled, this means that they are not dynamic. So for instance the keyboard shortcut to snap the window to the right edge will always snap the window to the right edge. Then for instance the same shortcut but in windows focus mode will first try to focus the window on the right and then if you press the shortcut again it will try to snap the window to the right edge. So this is basically what dynamic means. For me the default is okay because I always want the same shortcut to do the same thing. Let's check out those shortcuts. So really basic ones. Let's try them out. Press super and keep at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again really intuitive. Then the arrow keys again super. Left, right, up and down. Really easy to use but again this one is meant to be used with the mouse primarily and that's where the strength of this one lies. But this is not everything, there are also hidden features up here under advanced. Here you can enable the experimental features like predefined layouts, so I will do that. Then down here you can disable animations if you want. Then you have the option to activate adapting tiling always so you don't need to press control. So if I activate that one and move the window around, as you can see it wants to insert the window by default. So let's place it here and now the window is inserted. Then you have the favorite layout tiling and this means that if you have a favorite layout it will always tile based on this layout. If you want to have a favorite layout but don't want to use that one as default then similar as with the adaptive tiling you can specify an activation shortcut by default it's alt. Let's say I want the right mouse button and also here you can change the adaptive tiling shortcut default is control but you can change it to one of those if you want. I changed the favorite layout shortcut to the right mouse button but right now I don't have a favorite layout so if I move the window around the right mouse button will just do nothing. So let's create a favorite layout. Up here I have activated the experimental features and let's go back. Here you should see layouts and now here you have four predefined layouts. Let's see how they look like. On the right you can see a small preview of this one and on the left you can see the rectangle definitions. In this case I have two of those, the left one and the right one. If you want you can set a shortcut for this one, for instance Control p and now if I press Control p it asks me for the first rectangle, let's say Firefox and then the second one, let's say the terminal. And since the second rectangle is marked for stacking I can also stack windows inside this rectangle, like that. As you can see the four windows are now stacked into the right rectangle. How do we know this one is marked for stacking? We can see that here in the rectangle definition H means horizontal stacking. If you are interested you can find the feature description on their github page. If you go to wiki and layouts here you can find the video and also the description how to define those rectangles. If you want to set a layout as a favorite for instance let's say I want this one which has those two rectangles then we need to enable the panel indicator which is actually disabled by default but I accidentally enabled that one. So if this one is enabled then you will see this panel indicator up here and here you can select your favorite layout. I want this one so I will press on the star. Now this one is my favorite and I previously changed the keyboard shortcut for the favorite layout to right mouse button. So now if I drag a window and press and hold the right mouse button then I get my favorite layout. So let's say I want this one here and this one on the right side like that. And again let's find the terminal, let's place this one here and then the other terminal, let's move this one here. So really awesome stuff what you can do with the tiling assistant. The tiling assistant is definitely my favorite on Linux, on Windows my favorite is an application called Window Grid. I also made a video about my favorite layout snapping applications on Windows. So if you are interested how to snap Windows on Windows then you can check out my video. The link to the video is up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful then please give a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.